My Synology NAS 218 Plus is an integral part of my workflow, stream media, executing lightweight applications using Docker, and also running my smart home ecosystem. Now let's use this same device to expose my Zigbee devices to HomeKit with ease by integrating Zigbee to MQTT using Docker and get that one-stop solution all in one place. So let's not waste time like I always say, and let's jump into this tutorial. Well, welcome to my channel Tech with Eddie, which is all about integrating your IT devices with your preferred smart home ecosystem. If you are into HomeKit DIY, then there are tons of plugin tutorials that I have done. So please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now in a nutshell on how this plugin works. The plugin listens to the MQTT messages published by Zigbee to MQTT. It detects the devices using the devices topic. The device definition provided by Zigbee to MQTT contains a list of exposed attributes, which this plugin uses to determine which HomeKit services and characteristics to expose. This plugin should work with most lights, switches, and sensors. In fact, it supports plus 1,358 devices from 200 different plus vendors. Now you will be surprised with there is a very minimal user configuration. The plugin does most of the work. So for more information on which attributes are exposed and how they're all mapped, please refer to the documentation link that I have left in the description. Anyways, for all of this to work with Apple HomeKit, we will need one, a Synology NAS that runs Docker. In my case, I will be using the model DS218 plus. Two, the Zigbee gateway. We will be using the Conbi 2 stick and make sure you connect it with an, a USB extension cable. This makes communicating with the Zigbee, Zigbee devices more easier. Three, your DIY platform. I've already installed Hoops over here, but you can also uh, do it with HomeBridge uh, in their uh, Docker containers. And for a Zigbee device, Zemi Smart were kind enough to send me their inline smart switch and is connected to this lampshade over here. Now, I've broken down the video into four parts with the timestamps in the description. They are one, the MQTT install. Two, the Zigbee 2 MQTT Docker install. Three, the device integration into Zigbee 2 MQTT. And then from there, we will go into the plugin install and uh, with a quick demo. Well, it's pretty interesting. Let's not waste our time and let's begin. I had done the MQTT installer using Mosquito uh, in Docker a couple of months back and uh, the container had a new update which added a new security protocol which didn't allow uh, anonymous connections. So what I'm going to ask you is to pause this video here. I've left the link in the description. Go to that video, complete the installation of MQTT and come back here. Because from this point onwards, we are going to see how to uh, allow anonymous connections and have the MQTT service up and running using Docker. Let's log into the uh, uh, Synology NAS. This is the DSM 7.0 and let's check the Docker containers. So you'll see that the MQTT service is running. And to test the MQTT connection, let's open up the application and uh, let's hit uh, on connect. But that, before that, we want to make sure you want to check the credentials and there is no user credentials and let's hit connect. And the first thing you will see a connectivity issue asking for user credentials. This is due to the container update that requires uh, anonymous connections. So let's stop the container. And then from there, let's open up file station, go to mosquito folder, a config, and let's open up that file. And here, you, all you have to do is add in two lines, allow anonymous connection through, and the listener at 183. Once that's done, save the file, and let's start the container. Once the container starts, let's go back to the MQTT application and let's try the connective connection again. And so you see that the connection now is successful. Let's quickly go and do a subscribe publish message, calling it YouTube. And uh, let's call it hello world. And you'll see that the uh, published message has been subscribed. Let's visit the Zigbee to MQTT webpage and let's click on running Zigbee to MQTT. And from there, we can click on the Docker container. And from here, there are all the steps that is required to uh, execute the container. 
And from here, what we're going to do is we're going to go and access our Synology NAS and log in uh, using our credentials. If you're using DSM-6, the process is the same. And from here, we, I want to show you that we are not running the service. So let's go to containers and we don't have the Zigbee to MQTT running. So the next step what we're going to do is we're going to go to file station and create a folder within Docker called Zigbee to MQTT. And within this folder, we're going to create another one called data where we're going to run the application. And then let me resize the window to the left. A little bit of struggle to have everything positioned. Let me do a quick fix. Okay, there we are. And from here, we're going to open up terminal and we're going to log into the Synology using your credentials. So we're going to SSH into the uh, Synology NAS. So uh, your username at the rate of your, the IP address and type in your password. And from there, first things first, we're going to do is CD. We're going to go into this dev folder and we're going to type LS. You'll see a long list of uh, words starting with uh, TTY. Here we are going to look for the TTY CMO or CM0. This confirms that the device has found its location um, in the Synology NAS. So we know the device location um, in the Synology NAS, which is required for the configuration. Now from here, we're going to go and go into that paste bin location and copy the entire command that I have left in the description and we're going to paste it. Over here, we're going to give it a name, zigbee to mqtt the host, the time zone, the device location, and we're going to allow for a restart always whenever the container stops and where the app resides and to always choose the latest uh, zigbee to mqtt uh, container. Put in your uh, password and uh, wait for the Docker to be downloaded and installed. Once it's completed, let's go back to the Synology NAS uh, window. And we're going to go into the Docker. And we're going to see that the container is running. However, when you go into the logs, you are going to see an NPPM error. So let's go and fix that. We're going to open up file station. First, we're going to stop the, the container. And then we're going to go to file station, Zigbee to MQTT data, and double click on configuration.yaml. Now here, first things first, uh, if you're using for Home Assistant, we are not. Uh, if you're done pairing your devices, you want to change that persist to false. And next, just go and add in your uh, MQTT information, which is running in the uh, Synology NAS. And here we're going to add in two lines called adapter decons, which, and then we're also going to allow, uh, install the front end application. And here we're going to put in the IP address of the Synology NAS and your preferred port. Once that's done, hit save. And we go and restart the Docker. Give it a couple of minutes and let's go and open it up. Double click. And let's go to log and you'll see that here that it's successfully connected. Previously we did see the error, but after making those changes and adding the line adapter, We've seen that the service is now connected and all of the services are up and running. So we have uh, the Zigbee to MQTD successfully installed and we can go and check if the front end is working. Yes, that's working as well using the preferred port and the IP address of the Synology NAS. And with this, we conclude uh, we have the three dockers, Zigbee to MQTD, the MQTD as well as the Hoobs uh, containers. Now, before you go into integrating devices into your Zigbee network, you want to make sure uh, you want to do it one device at a time, because if multiple devices um, are into pairing mode, the Zigbee to uh, uh, MQTT network is going to pick all of them, but you're going to have a difficulty or may, you may have a challenge to rename all of them correctly. So the tip here is do it one device at a time and add it to your uh, Zigbee network. Based on, uh, depending on which brand you're using or which product, uh, some of them use the five second uh, hold the reset button or three clicks on the reset button. So please make sure you go through the uh, manuf uh, manufacturer's uh, manual as well. So let's go ahead and uh, add the device into the Zigbee network. So once the device is added, the Zigbee to MQTT service is very quick. It steps the network time to time and that's how it's uh, added to your dashboard. You can go ahead and rename the device as lampshade in, in this case. 
and uh, save changes. And you can also check other attributes of the uh, device as well. So you can see all of that information. Uh, you can also test the, the fixture over here. So before you can expose it to a home kit, you can do a self test over here. So this confirms the device is working. You can also do that within the dashboard. And uh, with this, it confirms that the device is in the Zigbee to MQTT network. And now we can go into exposing it. Let's access our Hoops UI, install in the container. And from there, we are going to go into uh, plugins, search, and type Z2M, hit install. And you just want to make sure that the lampshade is there in the network. And once the plugin is installed, is a very straightforward configuration to have everything connected. So give it a couple of seconds. And once that's completed, all you got to do is click on configuration. And all you have to do is add in the MQTT address uh, of the container that we're running. So it's the IP address of the Synology. Hit save, give it a couple of seconds, and you'll see that the MQTT service is connected. It's connected to the server and everything is working as required. So you can also see the lampshade uh, in Apple HomeKit as well as the Hoops UI. Now let's quickly go and see that lampshade that we added is working uh, correctly. So I have my iPad over here and if I hit on the lampshade, uh, works on Zigbee, so it's working within the Apple Home app. If I have to invoke the assistant, uh, she will also turn off the lampshade. And if I turn it off, uh, it turns off as well. So within the Home app, all of the devices have been imported into uh, Apple HomeKit. Again, the whole process is always make sure you add in the device into the Zigbee2 MQTT app because that makes it easier for the Hoops uh, uh, plugin to import all of the devices. If you go directly to the Hoops plugin, you could have some difficulty of the device not appearing over there. So make sure, uh, step one, uh, the device is added to the Zigbee2 uh, uh, MQTT network. Check it in the front end. And from there, go into the Hoops UI, hit that restart service, and it will import all of the devices. It's that easy. Finally, there we are. Collaboratively, we have installed the Zigbee to MQTT in Docker and integrated a Zigbee device into Apple HomeKit, giving you that one-stop solution. Now to keep all of this going, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. So that that's my real driver, that's my real motivator. The more the merrier to keep all of this coming. And if there's anything that I can help with, don't be shy to leave a comment down below. I'll be glad to assist as well. And don't forget to visit the developer's webpage. Give them a star and show them your support as well. So until the next time, my friends, stay safe. Have a nice day. Cheers and happy automation.